You're listening to Points Talk with the Travel Mom Squad, previously known as the Travel Hacking Mom Show. Follow the links in the show notes to stay up to date with what the Travel Mom Squad has been up to. In episode 23 of the podcast, we discussed the Hawaiian Hyatt Showdown between the Grand Hyatt Kauai and the Hyatt Regency Maui. Now we're back for part two as Jess just returned from the Hyatt Regency Maui and the Ondas Maui. Keep listening to hear how she thinks these two stack up against one another and the Grand Hyatt Kauai. Welcome to the Travel Hacking Mom Show. We are three moms who've discovered how to leverage credit card welcome offers to get hundreds of thousands of dollars in travel expenses for nearly free. We've used credit card points and miles to take vacations to places like Hawaii, Paris, Greece, the Maldives, Italy, and so much more. And the best part? We each still have an 800 plus credit score. Imagine being able to book a vacation without having to check your bank account. It's totally possible and we're here to show you how. Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Pam, Alex's mom. And I'm Jess. We are travel hacking moms. So like Alex said, I just returned from a week-long trip to Maui with my daughter. And Pam must be rubbing off on me because we decided to hotel hop. We visited both the Hyatt Regency Maui and the Andaz Maui. So I am here to spill the tea on both of those resorts and how they compare to the Grand Hyatt Kauai. So I know like you're going to be focusing on how the resorts compare, but I also want to hear maybe at the end how the two islands compare overall to you because you've been to Kauai so many times. So I'm just interested to hear like your overall take of the island as well. And I want you guys to know that Jess has not even let us know which she liked best. So we can't wait to the end of this to figure out which hotel she liked the most. Yeah, we were asking her and she was like, you're going to have to wait for the podcast episode. I even made my own mom wait. Like my mom texted me while we were there and she was like, which one do you like more? And I said, you're going to have to wait and listen to the episode. (laughs) Yes, you're so mean. She's probably anxious to know too because she went with you to Grand Hyatt Kauai. So now she's thinking, well, do I need to like go back and go to one of these other hotels with you? Okay, so last night in preparation for the recording of this episode, I actually re-listened to episode 23 where we discussed the Grand Hyatt Kauai versus the Hyatt Regency Maui. And at the very end of that episode, we were talking about me going to Maui to to sort of like test these out for myself. And I said something like, yeah, we're going to Kauai next year. And then maybe the year after that, we'll go to Maui. But then sure enough, as soon as that episode aired, I was like, I'm having FOMO. I need to go now. And so I booked the trip. Can I say that FOMO is so real? Jess was at the Andaz Maui. And I've been there just when friends were there. I haven't stayed there. And I was watching her pictures. And I went and booked it. I mean, we get so much FOMO from each other. Especially the other two. (laughs) I'm more like, "Eh, I can't. I'm a little more realistic. I'm like, I can't go to all these places. I got four little kids at home. But they don't have any self-control. Jess is mini Pam 1,000% and is traveling so much that she's maybe going to be overtaking Pam soon with her amount of travel. (laughs) No, Pam and I have no self-control. Just quit her job as a lawyer. Join Travel Hacking Mom and living like the life she was meant to live of just jet setting all the time. That's right. So before I get into my comparison, I want to give a disclaimer that... Because, okay, I don't know if y'all are ever like this, but sometimes I will be reading reviews of, like, really nice places, and the person is complaining about them, and I sort of eye roll, because I'm like, come on, you're, like, staying at this really nice place, and you have to, like, find something to, you know, be picky about. So I will say, I might have some, like, nitpicky things that bothered me about certain hotels, but... Like 10 years ago, I would have never imagined I could even stay at any of these resorts. And so they are all very amazing and very nice. And like, they're so good that I have to be nitpicky to like even find something wrong with them. All right. So the Hyatt Regency Maui is a category seven. And so it was 30,000 points a night for us to stay there. The Andaz is a category eight. So it was 40,000 points to stay there. So I don't feel like it's apples to apples really with these two properties because one costs 10,000 points more a night to stay there. So, you know, you're kind of thinking like, all right, well, that one should be better because it costs more points. 
Whereas with the Grand Hyatt Kauai and the Hyatt Regency, they're both 30,000 points a night. So I feel like those are a little bit more comparable. But I will say, I know it's a lot of points. Like, so we stayed three nights at the Regency, that's 90,000 points. And then we stayed three nights at the Andaz, that's 120,000 Hyatt points. So that's a lot of points, but we had $0 out of pocket for our hotel costs, which is amazing for six nights in Maui. And I wanted to just plug our brand new ultimate guide to Hyatt that I'm going to link in the show notes because we get questions so much like, how do you all have so many Hyatt points? How do you keep getting these points? So this ultimate guide sort of breaks down all the ways you can get Hyatt points, all the cards and everything we use. And so we will go ahead and link that. As far as the rooms go, so I actually had really comparable rooms at both resorts. I did not get upgraded to a suite at either one. The summer is peak travel time for Hawaii, so I was not surprised that I did not get upgraded to a suite. But I did get upgraded to an Ocean View King room at both properties. I honestly think the rooms are very comparable at these two properties. The Regency, I could tell, has been updated more recently. But I have zero complaints about the King room at either property. Both had great ocean views. Um, One thing that bothered me about the Andas is I feel like they need to upgrade their electrical outlet situation. Because they have no, like, all they have is just the traditional, like, two-prong plug outlets. Or, you know, those, like, really old-school outlets that you would, like, plug your computer in to dial up the internet? Like, they still have those in there. They've had no, like, USB or USC outlets. And that's pretty much all I have are USB and USC. So it was a little bit of a struggle to plug things in and charge our devices. So... That is the one complaint I have about the Andaz room. We had a king bed at both. With the Regency, the king room also has a sofa bed, which is nice. You can book two queen beds at either property. So a family of four could still book a standard room at both the Regency and at the Andaz. So you have the option of one king or two queens. Our king room at the Andaz did not have a sofa It had like a little lounge chair, but it did not have a sleeper sofa or anything like that. As far as the size of the hotels, this makes a huge difference for like the vibe of the hotel because the Hyatt Regency has over 800 rooms and suites. It is a very big hotel. The Andas has like a little over 300, so less than half the size much quieter, much more relaxing. The Hyatt Regency was like hopping. Like when we went down, I mentioned this in the last episode, but like we're up early in Hawaii, you know? So like we're at the club lounge at 630 when it opens because we are starving because we've been up since like 5 a.m., you know? And so when you went down to the club lounge at 630 in the morning at the Hyatt, it was hopping. There were people out. And Andaz, nobody quiet, peaceful. Everyone's sleeping in at the Onda. (laughs) So you could obviously tell the difference there. As far as globalist recognition, in the last episode, Alex was all talking about how, oh, I got upgraded to an oceanfront suite and my son got a cake and we got dreamers. No, they didn't do anything for me. I could have just been Joe Schmo walking into the Hyatt Regency. They did not care that I was globalist. I did get my upgrade to my Ocean View room, so that was very much appreciated. But zero, like not even a note, nothing. Did you get, at least tell me you got Lay's when you pulled up. Did they give like Molly anything? Okay, so it, we didn't get Lay's like when we pulled up. We got them when we were done checking out. Like, we checked in, she gave us the key, she gave us, like, the map of the property, and then they went and got the lace. I was about to say something, though, because, like, if they didn't give her lace, I was about to, like, excuse me, uh, where's my, where's my lay? I think that's how it was for us, too. We got them after they gave us, like, our keys and stuff. But did they give, like, Molly anything? Like, my kids got a little bag with, like, Easter goodies, but it was also Easter time. But then I've seen other kids go, and they get, like, little turtles and... Nope, nothing. Nada. Nothing? Nada. Man, they did They did not know who they were messing with when they left. Like, Jess loves those, like, 
little things, especially when you're like, hey, I'm globalist. I, I'm supposed to get something. I'm surprised you didn't say anything or be like, where's my globalist welcome gift? I don't like coming across as like entitled. I'm entitled to this. Give me something, you know. Yeah. Well, and you know, like, I love that I'm the one telling you, like, oh, why don't you just ask them? Like, you know, I in a gajillion years would never have asked them for anything. I'd be like, oh, well, I guess we didn't get it. Sad day. And even in Kauai, like, they gave Molly a stuffed animal at check-in. They gave me a bottle of champagne at check-in. And then in their room, they had a basket of snacks with a note from the general manager, like, welcoming me. But no, nothing at the Hyatt Regency. You know what? I wonder, like, because there's, like, a globalist Facebook group that we're in. And I've seen other people go and stay at the Hyatt Regency, and they've gotten stuff, too. So I'm like, maybe they just weren't on their game. I don't know. I hope that you were the exception and not, like, the rule, you know, like, that typically globalists get something there. We'll have to ask around some of our other globalist friends who've been there. What happened when you got to the Ondas, though? Oh, yeah. I was for sure recognized there. And they have a lot. Like, so we check in. They gave us this lavender lemonade that was really delicious while we waited to check in. They asked Molly what, and I don't think th- I don't think either of these things were because I'm globalist. I think they would do this for anyone. They asked Molly what her favorite color was, and she said purple. And they gave her these sunglasses that changed colors, like they were white. And then when you walk outside in the sun, they turn purple. So she thought that was the coolest thing ever. And then we got to our room, and there was a bottle of sparkling cider and a box of chocolates for Molly. And then there was a bottle of champagne, snacks, like cold cuts and crackers for me. And then they had a beach bag with like a note addressed to both of us and a little like travel pouch that said Andas Maui inside. So they were like over the top with the recognition. And I'm one of those people where I'm like, I appreciate a welcome amenity as much as the next person. But like, if you give my kids something, that's like major brownie points you know like that you not only had a bottle of champagne but you had a bottle of sparkling cider for my child like that just shows that they're like really considerate and looking out for their guests and not just like the standard welcome gift and one thing i want to point out like for each of these hotels i mean it's more obvious that you didn't do this with Hyatt regency but even for on Dawes, like you got all of those things but it's not like you said hi i'm jess from travel hacky mom and i'm gonna write a blog post about you or anything like that it was like, they just did this because that's what they do for guests. Maybe I should have said that. Yeah, maybe you should have. So, Jess, let's go back to the Andas on food. Did you get the treats every day that the Andas are famous for? Besides the great welcome treats, did they also have treats and juices just because you get them at the Andas? So they had a mini bar with like Hawaiian cookies. They had like chocolate chip and macadamia nut cookies. And then they had Hawaiian-style chips in the mini bar, And then in the fridge, they had root beer and pog juice and another canned juice. And those were replenished daily. So what I would do, and this was very Pam Jr. of me, I would take all the treats. I would take, like, the chips and the cookies and the juices, and I would put them in our beach bag and, like, take them to the pool with us. And so that way we had, like, drinks and snacks to eat and didn't have to pay ten dollars for a cookie from the pool bar and then while we were gone they would clean our room and they would replenish the snacks and so that was sort of my scheming that i did i have trained you well as far as location goes this is the biggest i think the location is the biggest factor for me and like which one i personally enjoyed more The Hyatt Regency is on Kanapali Beach, as we said in the last episode, which is on the west side of Kauai. It is very busy. There are a lot of tourists. It almost reminded me of like the Cancun Hotel Zone, where there's just like a line of resorts along the beach. It's very similar to that. And so the nice part is you can like walk along the little path and pass all the other resorts and like walk to Whalers Village. The downside to me is. It felt so crowded. Like there were so many people. And the Hyatt Regency Maui is on the beach. It is oceanfront. You can swim in the beach. I was not impressed by the beach at all. Like we didn't actually swim in the water in front of the Hyatt Regency. 
And there were not a lot of people from the hotel swimming in it. Um, there is a lot of like restoration going on along the beach. I think there was some damage there maybe or some erosion. And so there's a lot going on there with like things tarped off. The water just wasn't, it didn't look clean to me. Like it was like brown. And so I had no desire to go in that water. Um, we preferred Airport Beach or Black Rock Beach, which are a short drive away from the Regency. We went snorkeling there and boogie boarding and like we loved that area. The area in front of the Regency, I was like, I'm not going in that water. The Andas is in Wailea, which is more on the south side of the island. I thought the beach at the Andas was way better than the beach in front of the Regency. In the morning, the beach in front of the Andas is calm and great for snorkeling. We did like an outrigger excursion and it's great for that. And then in the afternoon, the winds pick up and that's when we would see people like boogie boarding or kite surfing in that area. So overall, I thought they're both beachfront properties. I thought the beach in front of the Andas was much better than the beach in front of the Regency and it was not as crowded. Wailea is a much more like upscale quiet relaxed area and so it does still have that little path where you can walk in front of other resorts but the resorts are more spread out from each other and there just are not as many people in that area that I saw yeah I totally agree with what you're saying about the beaches the beach is like so I haven't actually stayed at the Andas but I stayed at the Marriott Wailea Beach Resort which is really close so there's like the beach in front of the Andas and then it's not a terribly far walk where you could go to Wailea Beach too, which is a really nice area. We, I will agree with you. Like I didn't swim at the beach in front of the Hyatt Regency, but my kids did. And my kids snorkeled and saw like turtles and fish and loved it. And I've heard the restoration there has been going on for quite a while. And I don't know if it like changes frequently. Like maybe it was worse now when you were there or there's more tarped off or they tarp off sections and then move you know, open and close areas periodically, maybe. But we liked the beach there for snorkeling. Like, that was it. We didn't really do a whole lot else there. The first time we went in 2021, the beach was better. There wasn't, like, any of the restoration going on, which is probably why it's bad now, because maybe they should have shut things down. Because there's so many people, like you said, it is a really busy area. And so if they're having that many people there, then that's a really good thing that they're doing some protections for those that beach because it's just yeah way too much but I agree with you the on does I like you nailed it with Wailea the vibes are extremely different and it's much more like relaxing if you're looking for like I just want to relax and see like the beauty of Hawaii then Wailea is an amazing place to go if you're like oh we want to go and we want to be on the go we want to like drive to all these places and do all these things or you know we're going to spend a lot of times at the pools and then we're going to go snorkeling and then Kanapali area is a great place to go I feel like there's people who are very like oh Kanapali that's the only place we're going to go and oh we only go to Wailea so it's like there's very strong opinions I feel like and I think they're both great for different reasons okay I understand like when I was at Kanapali I was like I totally get why Alex prefers this area with her kids but I was like I cannot understand Pam choosing this I think they're great for different reasons and you know what it depends on my mood too sometimes I'm up for one and sometimes I'm like no I just want to chill I want to be down in Wailea yeah I was I was shocked I was like how could Pam choose this over the Grand Hyatt Kauai but yeah I feel like Wailea is just way more like authentic Hawaiian feel to me. But I mentioned that in the last episode, you know, when we were talking and I was like, the whole reason I like the Grand Hyatt Kauai is because it feels a little bit more secluded. There's not a lot of tourists around. So that's just like my preferred vibe. But like you said, there are people who might be like, oh, Wailea sucks because it's so boring and quiet, you know? So I really think it just depends on what you're looking for. And I knew from the get-go that you could come back and you would like Wailea and Andaz more because I know, like, first of all, Andaz is a more luxurious place and you like the finer things in life. And so I knew that that was what you would choose. And I just love walking to Whaler's Village, like on that pathway to me. I think it's so fun. 
But I totally was like, yeah, Jess is going to like the chill, relaxed vibe at Onda's morning. And we also like, we love Fleming Beach, which is like near Kanapali for boogie boarding. And I'm sure there's great boogie boarding on the south side, like by Wailea, but we've just found the best for us that we know of, like in Kanapali area. All right. So let's get to food. I 100% agree with both of you that the club lounge at the Hyatt Regency Maui is much better than the club lounge at the Grand Hyatt Kauai. It's bigger. There's more food options. There's more kid-friendly options. And the views. Did you like the views from there? Yeah. And the views were great. So we we really liked the club lounge. We had breakfast there every morning. and We actually had two dinners there. So we saved a ton of money by being able to eat in the club lounge. And I'll repeat that if you have global status or if you book into a club access room, you get access to the club lounge at the Hyatt Regency. So you don't have to have global status, but you would have to book into a club access room, which will cost a little bit more points. I think it's worth it. Like if I if I were not globalist, I would book a club access room at the Hyatt Regency Maui because we saved so much money being able to eat there. Especially if you have like a bunch like some kids going with you. I mean, if you're if you're a family of four or a family of five or six, like Alex. You will save hundreds of dollars by being able to eat at the club lounge. And so for me, 100% worth it at that property. Um, We didn't eat a ton of other, I think we had lunch by the pool once. I was not overly impressed by the food. It was, I had a Caesar salad. Maybe I just chose the wrong thing. It, It was just like a standard Caesar salad. Nothing really exciting. Molly had the mac and cheese. And I think you actually said this in the last episode. It was basically like, they made craft Easy Mac and put it in a bowl. Um, yeah, and it was like $14. So the club lunch food, I feel like for sure beats Grand Hyatt Kauai. But as far as like other resort restaurants, I feel like Grand Hyatt Kauai is much better. The Andaz, of course, amazing in all the ways. But the Andaz does not have a club lounge. And so they just have a restaurant where breakfast is served the buffet is very pricey. So if I were not globalist, I probably it was it was forty nine dollars for an adult buffet, and it was twenty four fifty for Molly's. I think kids under twelve are twenty four fifty for the buffet. So that's pretty pricey for a buffet. I personally probably would not have paid for that if I were not globalist. But it is an amazing buffet spread. They had everything you could possibly want at the buffet so we really enjoyed it and then we ate by the pool one day and then we ate dinner at their like poolside restaurant they have live music and we ate there one night and I thought the food was really good I actually still prefer the Grand Hyatt Kauai food over the Andaz food from the restaurants but it was still great at the Andaz you know the Andaz prices are a little bit higher that's to be expected because it's a you know fancier resort but food in Hawaii in general is expensive. So I feel like no matter where you go, you're going to spend a pretty penny on food. So the pools, I feel like, is where the Hyatt Regency shines for younger, especially for younger kids. So the Hyatt Regency has like a main pool and then they have a kid's pool. They are normally connected by this like grotto bar. You can like go under a waterfall and it connects you to the other pool. That is currently closed, and when I asked about a potential reopen date, they said they don't have one. So we are not sure how long that's going to be closed. It could be a while. I think they are repairing damage to that. So, yeah, it could be a while. I will say, like, for me, like, I know some people, like, I've heard them be like, oh, I'm canceling my trip. I'm not going. For us, like, it was not a big deal in the slightest because we never went to the grotto bar. And... We never like swam through and it's not that big or long. It's like, you know, it's a passageway that connects the two pools, but we never were going through the passageway. Maybe some people, they've been there before. They love going underneath the bar and sitting at the bar and ordering their drinks. But like for us, we are like, does it impact my trip at all? I guess I should say. So, but the the kids pool is really cool. They, for like younger kids, I feel like they have a slide for younger kids. They have some 
little like toys for them to climb on, like a sea turtle and a dolphin. And then there's also like a bigger slide sort of behind that for older kids. And so that was like one pool area and then the main pool area. I think considering how big that resort is that the pool is not big enough like it got really crowded so here's another bone i have to pick with the higher regency which we mentioned you mentioned on the last episode was that people save their seats and they go out there really early like we would get done with breakfast at 7 30 and we would go out there and like the front row of chairs was already taken not by people but just by like their things saving the seats so that was a little bit annoying um what we would do is we would just start swimming at like 7.30 in the morning and then we'd be out there for a few hours because I would say around 9.30 or 10 is when it started getting really busy with people. And then we would just like leave at 10 and go do something else. So it was fine. But yeah, I don't want to be in a pool that's like crowded with a ton of other people. And so if you're wanting to do like an all day pool thing, I wouldn't have done that. And they charge you for your towels if you don't return them. And even if you return them, they charge you, which is what they did to me. But you got that taken care of. I got it taken care of. But also, I'm like, if anyone can just come up here and say, I return my towels and you remove the charge, like, why do you even do it anymore? You know? No, I totally agree with you. I mean, I get that it probably would be annoying because a lot of people probably take towels to the beach and never bring them back. But, like, you're also charging an arm and a leg for people to stay there. So you just kind of got to cut your losses. So Molly's nine. She's going to be 10 in August. And so I think the kids pool was. Like that, like the kids pool is not a factor for us to really be like, oh, we have to stay at the Regency because of the kids pool because she's a little bit too old for the kids pool area, you know. But I do see how that could be really appealing for people with younger kids, like maybe under five. And then at the Andas, they actually have five pools at the Andas. They have an adults only pool and then they have like a tiered pool. It kind of reminded me of the pool at the Grand Hyatt Kauai, how there's like different levels. And so they have like three levels of infinity pools. And then the very bottom pool is a lagoon pool that sort of actually reminded me of the lagoon pool at the Grand Hyatt Kauai. And I went into the Andas thinking like, this is not going to be a family friendly place. I'm not scared to bring my child to like more adult oriented things. Like I've brought her in business class. I've brought her to the Park Hyatt in New York. I've brought her to the Park Hyatt Paris. I took her to the Cape in Cabo. So like, I'm very much comfortable bringing her, you know, places that may not necessarily be considered family friendly. But the Andas was way more family friendly than I was expecting. Like that bottom lagoon pool had a ton of families at it. And I don't know if it's because it was summer and that's just when a lot of families are traveling. But they had that. We played bingo by the pool. They came around with ice cream for everyone. And so they had like floats and pool noodles and sand toys for kids to use so it was just way more family friendly than I was expecting I was pleasantly surprised by that so we basically hung out at that lagoon pool most of the time and complete opposite experience like you don't have to wear a wristband at the Andas you don't have to check out towels and return them you don't have to get up at the crack of dawn and reserve a chair because like anytime you go out there there's the seat available because it's not a huge resort you know so just a very much more like relaxing pool day experience at the Andas versus the Hyatt Regency. So all that being said, ooh, are you going to tell? Well, I I think I'm knowing what she's going to pick. <laughs> well, I know what she's going to pick between the Andas and the Hyatt Regency, but we've all got the Grand Hyatt in there, so I'm not sure when you add that. So between so between the Regency and the Andas. Obviously, I liked the Andas more. And and Molly actually liked the Andas more also. She did. The one thing the Regency has going for it in her eyes is all those animals that they have. So she really liked. They have like penguins and parrots and ducks and swans and flamingos. And she really liked walking around and seeing those. But as far as like when we were at the pool of the Andas, I was like, which one do you like more? She was like, Andas pool, which surprised me that she said that. So we both preferred the Andas. I just really like the Wailea area better. Um, I don't know that I, it's not that I have anything against the Hyatt Regency, but like I don't know that I would stay there again if the Andas is an option. Like I might just stay at the Andas and then like drive over to that side of the island for a day and go snorkeling and like take her to the Hyatt to see the animals. But 
the animals alone are not enough for me to be like, okay, let's stay at the higher Regency. So I would choose the Andas if I had to choose between those two. I think that totally makes sense of everything that you're saying. I thought that's what you would choose from the get-go. So no surprises there for me. I, and I agree. Like, I would love to take my family to the Andas, but I just feel like... You need, like, a million points because you would need two rooms. Yeah, like, I'd have to get two rooms, or I could do what I did last time, and my parents come, too, and I put two of them in her room and two in my room. I don't think Pam would mind that. She wouldn't. She's so great. She loves them coming and knocking on her door and wanting to stay with her. So I could do something like that. I and Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should try that, Mom. But that's the only way for me because I'm like, man, I'd be paying 80,000 points a night to get two rooms. Like, that's just a ton. And so for me, it's like the Hyatt Regency. I know it's the only difference of 10,000, but when you have to get two rooms, that's 20,000 points a night. That adds up a lot. Well, I think you had said that your preference is the residence club. And we did walk by, we did walk by the residence club and it did look really nice. Like I didn't go inside of it, but um, the outside looked really nice. The pool looked really nice. And so I can totally see how for a bigger family, the residence club would be like number one, you know? Yeah. And we can fit there and it's 48,000 points a night. Yeah. For to get a two bedroom unit. And like last time when my parents did in the two bedroom unit with us, because there's also like the living room with a sofa bed. And so being able to get my family for 48,000 points a night versus 80 at the on dolls, that's just crazy and not going to happen. But I 1000% like want to go back or go to the on dolls with my husband. I love Wailea area. We've talked about it before, like with the Wailea Beach, the Marriott Resort. That was like one of my favorite resorts. But it's just so many points now with Marriott to stay there since they've gotten rid of their award chart. So I've had my eye on Ondas for a while. Like the next time my husband and I are going alone, that's where we're going to be trying to stay. And you have to get the mochi waffles at breakfast because those are so good. Done. Done. Okay. As far as I've been having, I've been thinking a lot about this. As far as between the Grand Hyatt Kauai and the Hyatt Regency Maui and the Ondas Maui, I prefer Kauai over Maui as an island and so I feel like that sort of makes me lean towards the Grand Hyatt Kauai as my number one because Kauai is just more my vibe with being smaller not as many people a little bit more remote a little bit more laid back Maui was just much more touristy I think Kauai is prettier between the two like it's greener i think the weather on maui is probably better and more predictable like we had sun the entire time no rain both times we've been to Kauai, we've had rain i mean it's just the passing showers but we've had rain on Kauai. but it's funny because the very first time i went to Kauai, i asked someone i was like does it always rain this much here and he was like it's called the garden isle and in order to be green it has to rain i totally agree with you so I know you guys talked about doing the road to Hana, but sometime you'll have to do that because it is like really, really beautiful. Yeah, I need to do that with like you. Well, and here's the thing, like I liked it, but it's not something I need to do again and again because Kauai is so beautiful. Like go to Kauai, go to the North Shore and I feel like, oh, you've kind of done the road to Hana a little bit. But I didn't think the road to Hana was going to be that great because I was like, I've been to Kauai and Kauai is so beautiful. And then we did it and I was like, wow, this is pretty amazing. I am not surprised at the outcome of this at all. I think I could totally pick that you would probably pick the Grand Hyatt Kauai because, you know, you you just have been such a lover of it. And, you know, I thought it was great. And, it, and, you, and this is surprising, too, is... I like Maui better than Kauai. And I think it's because I've spent a lot of time in Kauai and I've had a lot of times with rain. And I'm not a rain girl. I'm not a rain girl. I hate the rain. And I get so frustrated that I kind of gave up on Kauai, although I love it. We have timeshare there. I mean, I'm going there in, um, this is before I got into points and miles, but I'm going there in July taking grandkids. And so I've spent a lot of time on Kauai. It's gorgeous and I love it, but that rain just drives me nuts. And so that kind of ruins it for me. So I've always liked Maui better because of the weather, 
but I agree with you. And I do like the spirit and the vibe up in Kanapali sometimes. And I love watching grandkids. But when if I'm going and if I'm going with a friend, or I'm going with my husband. Yeah, it's all about, you know, the Wailea Beach. And I know that's why I would love the Andas. And so that's why I booked it. You got to stay there. Yeah. So it's funny, though, because I have a friend who is like, I can't stand Kauai because there's no nightlife. And like, once the sun goes down, everything closes. And I'm like, that's fine with me. I'm ready to go to bed by like nine o'clock at night when I'm there, you know. But it's totally dependent on the person. Like, I don't I don't feel like there's one Hawaiian island that everyone agrees is the best, you know, because it's totally depends on you and your style. But yeah, so I'm going to say Grand Hyatt Kauai, still my number one. Because I just love it. I love the resort. I love Kauai. I love Poipu Beach. I love all of that. Um, and then I would have to say Andaz Maui is my number two. And then sadly, Regency is going to be number three. I think, I mean, honestly, like if I were going to plan the perfect trip to Hawaii, I'd probably do like five or six nights on Kauai and then five or six nights on Maui, you know, and do five nights at the Grand Hyatt Kauai and five nights at the Andaz Maui. And that to me would be the best of both worlds. And I actually ran into a travel hacking mom follower at the Maui airport. And she and her family had just finished up two weeks in Hawaii. They stayed at the Hyatt Regency in Waikiki. And then they stayed at the Grand Hyatt Kauai. And then they stayed at the Hyatt Regency Maui. And she had two kids, five and eight. And I was grilling them. I was like, which one was your favorite between all of them? Like, what did you like? And her whole family said Grand Hyatt Kauai, like no question. And they said it for the same reasons. They were like, Maui's too crowded. We like the laid back vibe of Kauai. We like the like how pretty it is. And so just going to depend on your family's preferences is what I think at the end of the day. And then as far as like families or couples, I think... I think the Grand Hike Y is great for families or couples. And I think the Andas, the Andas is probably more leans towards couples being there. But like, like I said, it was more family friendly to, than I was expecting. I personally would not stay at the Hyatt Regency Maui without children. And at least at the Grand Hyatt, they have an adults only pool that you can go to. I didn't see an adults only pool. There isn't. And I've done Grand Hike Y, just my husband and I, and it was great. All right. Well, I still can't believe that I got six nights on Maui at luxury resorts for zero dollars. There is truly nowhere like Hawaii. And I can't wait to return again next year on points and miles, of course. If you want to learn how you can travel like this, make sure you register for our free masterclass, How to Start Traveling for Nearly Free. We will put a link in the show notes. Thanks so much for listening to the Travel Hacking Mom Show. Make sure to hit the subscribe or follow button from wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Want to start jet setting even faster? Follow the links in the show notes to learn about everything we discussed in today's episode. And to stay connected and follow along, follow us on Instagram at Travel Hacking Mom. We can't wait to see where in the world points and miles take you. 